Hello everyone, welcome back. It is time for a summary of what we did last week in the stream, which we did uh, quite a lot more in, I think, this one. <laughs> I did a lot more in this stream than I did in the last stream, because in this stream I was able to connect at the beginning, which was very nice. Uh, there was a lot of exploring done. We did get a, quite a few of these quests sorted. Um, let's have a look. We've got quest lines. There, there is this, um, there's a wild hunt quest line, which I didn't realise the first time we played. You just have to kill a bunch of monsters and you get a reward and then it resets every so often so you can do it again and again and again so when we come back in the next stream we'll be able to hand this in there's no point in me handing it in now although i do get a hamburger from it uh because we're going to reset the server before we play but it's nice to have a hamburger i mean creator mode you can't see what's in my inventory uh, it's nice to have a, a hamburger every now and then mike has been in offline between streams and expanded our living area quite considerably which is going to be very helpful for the next stream uh when we left it was coming out to about here oh this is actually the original thing um yes that's right this is our original fence but it was quite cramped there was still some terrain hither and yon uh, we made the charcoal kiln furnace it's a big blobby thing it's huge which was just sort of plonked here but now everything's been cleared out and we've well, Mike has expanded our protected, as it were, area, our fenced out area, all this way, all the way down to the coast, I believe he said, which is brilliant, because um, it means we can play with all this terrain, uh, and somewhat in that direction as well. Let's go and have a look. Where, where is the edge? Is there an edge? Does it end? Well, that's huge. Mike, look at this. And he says it's lit it all up. So if we press F7... Um, you'll see, <laughs> he says, F7 is the, I believe, the special button that tells you if baddies are going to spawn. There's a death marker here. I died underground, which means there's an underground bit here, so we can check. Yeah, here's the, here's the spawning areas. So all of the stuff that Mike has visited, this is a new track, apart from that bit. Uh, um, can't get this stuff. Uh, but no, seriously, this is an immense amount of work for someone with the kids <laughs> um, and he's even actually gone to the effort of look he's um, certain places where a, a baddie could probably if you did this for example then the enemies could in theory sneak through the gap so hopefully he has been aware enough that that's an option so he's actually covered up the fencing uh, covered up the ingress points very well so I'm, I'm pleased with this well done Mike what is this I don't know gap row that's a thing apparently and there's a tree on top of it so there you go um all of this is now ours and we have some thinking to do about how to make best use of this terrain i like using terrain in builds but you can imagine that when there's big potholes caused by creepers and there's sort of dents in the ground that aren't quite big enough to house a house <laughs> as it were you you want to do some terraforming but you don't want to just raise everything flat you know, to the same level and just build on top of it. That's too American and we're English. So we're going to try and work with the terrain. Um, it, this actually has been terraformed to the point where it looks like a chunk error, but it is not. We did that ourselves. So we went for a journey. There's another death over here. Tristan suggested that I leave death markers on until I do this and then delete them at the end of this, which is actually a really good idea because then we can see how many times we died. Uh, I died over here running away from creepers. Did it delete? There we go. Did it delete? It's not deleting automatically. It's fine. Deleting won't help anyway. We went to explore this tower, which turned out to be a lot more trouble than it looks like it is from the outside. We had a little look. We made our way in, and then it just turned out that you can easily get stuck in uh, cobwebs, and they're very hard to break. So we got stuck in there a lot. We died a lot. Um, and there's all these monster spawners that we can't reach, basically, because by the time that we've reached them, we're dead. So that was a problem. But it looks like there's some stuff up here. There are some chests, so I won't open those chests. We'll leave that for the uh, exploration of the next stream. So come along so you can see what's in those chests on the next stream. As if we have a, a real marker here with some lava. We went along this way, so I'll show you what we found. So at this point, I was 
feeling a little bit the worse for wear. We kept dying. I kept suggesting maybe we shouldn't go out here at night. Um, people did anyway. <laughs> so there we were. Uh, we went inside this place. I nerd polled this strip of dirt here was my nerd pole to get in here. But it turned out, apparently, which I didn't notice, you could just go in here. So let's have a look at this. I believe this is one of those roguelike dungeons or doom-like dungeons. There's a, there's a dungeons mod which creates dungeons. Let's turn those off, obviously. Uh, this does not appear to be it. It's just a really deep shaft with waterfalls in it. I remember seeing Lawrence climbing a waterfall to get out again, by the way. Galena or okay. We're looking for a couple of things, not to get off topic or anything, but I mean, what is the topic apart from what we're doing? Um, these quests that we were looking at, there's only a couple that we haven't done yet, and they both really involve finding stuff. Saltpeter, not found. Prosperity shards, not found. We've, it says zero of 30. We do have a few, but not that many. Maybe seven or so. We haven't found Kirby. We could probably make some of these, but otherwise we moved on to the next ones. We started, I think, f we started all of these, I think. Uh, so we have Kitchen Workshop. We have done a bit of it. Fair enough. I keep clicking the wrong thing. We've got Blacksmith's Workshop. I think Mike was working on this, and there's actually quite a lot of intricacy here. So I'm not going to go through it. Um, but it did involve Mike stamping on gunk to make methane. <laughs> when I stamp on stuff, methane happens too. So uh, I can understand how that works. We've got the Tinker's Construct finally started off. Next stream we're almost certainly going to go down the Tinker's Construct route because that's how we're going to get early game ore doubling which means every vein, every ore block that we bring back is going to be worth twice as much as it would be if we just shoved it into a um, furnace. But we're also going to need lava which is why I marked that lava on the map. I know we're going to need it at some point. There isn't very much there though. That's the description again. You'll you'll figure it out. Lawrence is doing black magic. Apparently, he's he's been uh, you know collared with the sorcery role, whether he wants to or not is another thing. But apparently, getting started with it is quite difficult. It involves a diamond. Again, we're already on a quest where searching for stuff is just the way, and it, it's completely random. You know, you have to search for diamonds the same way you normally do by digging low down and hoping for the best. Um, so we died a bit in here. This uh, is my death marker right here. All of this stuff here is me trying my level best to... Um, <laughs> I actually ended up... I opened this up to burn the skeletons to death, what was trying to kill me and all that. But they elected not to uh, get killed. This thing was here before. I cut this lava off, or so I thought. So it looks like actually there's a. It's good to know. You know, I'm flying around in creative mode, getting a little bit, maybe some uh, possibly disallowed, forbidden knowledge from from this, but that's okay. Uh, and I'd love to look in here as well. Hey, look, a troll. Looking at me like that for? Fucking happy. Anyway, um, tosser. Let's uh, let's leave. So there's that. There's a lot of that. And then finally, what I have to report. Uh, I think this is possibly the last episode is where we learned about... Oh, I have other things to report. Let's go home. Um, we learned about a... There's a meteor over here. The sort of meteor that you get uh, AE2 stuff in. And Tristan is... I believe amenable to doing AE2 rather than um, refined storage, I think, is the alternative. They're, they're one and the same, in my opinion, I, as far as I can tell. <laughs> There's not that much to differentiate them apart from the aesthetics of them, and I prefer the aesthetics of AE2, but I do not know how RS works, so there you go. Look at this thing. This is what you might call a big asteroid <laughs> that has made a big crater. I, I really like the way that they put the asteroids in craters now. It's brilliant. Um, there's a bit more lava there, but that's not going to help us too much. And there's a village that we've noticed, but we haven't explored it yet, so I'm not going to go in there and spoiler it for everybody. Can I do slash home again? Yeah. Um, Anne. 
hand, I died over here because I could hear spiders. This is even more exploded than it used to be. Mike, what have you done? So I died here, <clears throat> here because I went to explore the spiders. Ruby ore, by the way. Uh, Osmium ore. Osmium is going to be useful. There's some good ores down here. So if we can get in here without dying from spiders. Oh, I love this place. Right. We're going in there. This is a proper spelunkin. Next time. Next time. Uh, <laughs> if we can manage. When we went to the tower, we thought we were all sazard and we are going to be able to beat everything up. Nope. Absolutely trounced. So. Going exploring is possibly a thing that we don't want to do. We also went up to this slime island. My nerd pole is still here because I came down the waterfall. I really couldn't be bothered deleting it. Apologies, but I'm not gonna. Um, I will probably get rid of it at some point. Oh, it's made more slimy dirt. So we could probably also just get some slimy grass downstairs if we wanted to. I'm not sure why we would do that. Um, I picked up all the slime blocks. And from the slime blocks, I made my... Uh, can I get my survival inventory? Oh, I can, look. Uh, slime boots. Slime boots and slime sling. Now, if you've never seen the slime boots or the slime sling, without the slime boots, uh, can I just do time zero? Is that midday? Time set. Time set. Oh. Yeah. Without, I put survival mode on. So let me take my uh, slime boots off. The slime sling, you aim it at the ground and you go very, very fast in the other direction. And then you fall and it hurts. Right. Good to know. With nobody on the server, this should not take too long for us to be able to play a little more. There we go. Um, but, with slime boots, well, we shall see. Uh, it's, it's equipment, brilliant. Everything seems to know where it was, which is quite nice. Tristan said it doesn't know, but I think it does know. What we did learn is that I lost my... Um, wooden hook because it went in here and that's actually really cool too basically you press C to fire the hook and it grips onto a thing and then it pulls you up and it's kind of hard to control but that's alright uh, with <laughs> look, <laughs> never mind. with slime boots we tend to bounce a little bit which means that traversing the world is now trivial the problem is and you're going to guess <laughs> I'm not going to have to tell you if you saw the previous video the problem is price uh, slime slime bow slime bow themselves is an advanced crafting recipe with one two three four five ten blocks of slime two blocks of silicon silicon is nine slices of silicon and a slice of silicon is three from a silicon ball we had just enough silicon balls to make two blocks of silicon so that I could have these slime boots and the slime sling is only eight slime balls and one block of inferior essence, which is the cheapest one. It's the lowest tier. We have plenty of that. We've made a wooden grip before for the, actually for the hook shot that I just showed you. And these were easy too. It was just a lot of string. It was a lot of wood. It was a bit of copper and it was a lot of slime. Luckily, I had a lot of slime. So the slime sling was actually quite easy to make. The thing that sends you flying across the world, easy to make. The thing that makes it safe for you to go flying across the world, Hard to make. Uh, so, thanks for that, everybody. <laughs> thanks, game. Just what I needed. What's this? Let's go into creative mode. Oh, I've seen these wells before. Oh, not this well. <laughs> Boring well. Well. Oh, well. Let me out. Um, and that's basically it. So, in between then and now, I've been doing some thinking. Because what we want to do... Why am I flying when I could yeet? That's actually faster than creative mode flight, which is amazing. My uh, <laughs> my bouncy boots don't work, which is a shame. I was thinking over here. Something over here would be a really good place to start building, I think. Because it might be nice to... This is like a sort of a Mines of Moria sort of giant door waiting to happen or something like that. So build in here the entrance to the mountain. That would be cool. And then over here, if you sort of dig in here-ish, I suppose. See how far we can go before 
I'm expecting to run into either our hovel or the... Uh, well, yeah, approximately near our hovel. So we've just gone past it, which is fine. <laughs> Even though I said it in the most vitriolic tone of voice you could imagine. Um, it's in there somewhere, right? So we could probably connect a decent building out here. I'm thinking a warehouse here, right? This is where we'd store everything. It could have a couple of stories tall. Uh, of, it could have stories tall. Um, and then some barracks, so maybe we could move over here. It might be nice to live somewhere there. It might be nice to live somewhere over there. But that with maybe some... Uh, I was thinking of putting a dock or a jetty to cover this mess up. Because this is no fun at all. We could patch up the river, put in a sort of a waterside warehouse... Attach it to maybe some barracks or some power generation. We could have sort of an industrial area over there, maybe a farming area over here. Maybe we could live on this hill. I don't know. We could live on the slime island if we wanted to. Who's counting? Um, so I've been doing a bit of thinking about what that building might look like. I've been doing a bit of thinking about what this um, mine entrance might look like, this mountainside. I mean, it could be a really grand thing by the river. It could go, it, you know, it could be. We could actually even extend this river in. Oh, I'm thinking now. Take that river in, have a big archway, and then sort of massive doors. <laughs> no further may you go. You have to get out of your boat or something. Um, I don't know. There's so much to think about. Uh, how, there's a way of getting rid of the... There we go. So I'm actually going to take a screenshot. Is it F12? Who knows? Um, I forgot. F2. Whatever. Something there goes into the hovel. Then we can move out of the hovel, start storing everything properly, and then next to it we can have the thing that powers the storage, which is going to be some more technological stuff, and hopefully by then we'll actually have ore doubling and technology and things like that, and some actual economy going on, rather than just going outside, getting ganks, and going, where the hell's all the diamond ore? So, next time there's going to be a bit of building, there's going to be a bit of exploring, there's going to be some tinkers constructs, and hopefully we'll be getting on to some form of modern storage there's going to be some exploring we've got a village to explore there's going to be trying to get into that asteroid so we can start with ae2 and there's probably going to be a lot of dying and stuff as well unfortunately ed has given up the ghost because every time he tries to connect it's just terrible he thinks it's because he's in america i'm having kind of trouble connecting as well so it's not out of the question um you know it's, it's not insane to believe that it's because of his distance, but it is a shame that he won't be joining us, but maybe he will do a series on his own, and if he does, we will link to his videos, and we will link to his um, streams, if he does it, so keep an eye on for those, but until next time, thanks for watching, I'll see you on Thursday at half past seven GMT for the next Everyone Dies and Gets Mad at This Game episode on Twitch, so I'll see you then. Bye!